A very good morning to all the students of class 8. My name is Prena and I'm your English teacher. And today from your English book Skyline, we are going to be reading chapter number 10. Here we go. So this is chapter number 10 and the name of the chapter is 8 rupees. Let us first read the introduction of the chapter. It says, this is a story about a young boy who is forced by circumstances to earn a living. Let us read the story how he manages. So a small boy, very young, uh, of very young age, who has to go out and work so that he can earn money for his family. It was nine o'clock. The boy, thin and small, lumbered up the steps of a many-story apartment building. He stopped at each door to survey. His shirt was tattered and his skin showed through. His pockets bulged with the weight of something in him. So in the very first paragraph, the author is describing about the boy. This boy who walked in a very awkward manner, he was entering a building and his clothes were in, not in a very good condition. And this boy was carrying something in his pockets. On the top floor, a door with a bigger and brighter nameplate caught his eye. He stared at it for some time and moved a little away to sit down on the floor. He saw people coming out of the apartments and going down the stairs. The boy studied each one intently, that is very attentively. The door with a bigger and brighter nameplate finally opened and rather a well-dressed tall man came out. The boy sprang up and pulling out two tins of polish and a brush from his bulging pockets said in a pleading voice, Shushan Sahib, the man took a look at his shoes and said, I don't need one now, maybe not for another two days. The boy's countenance fell, that is, his, fail, his face fell, he felt really sad. It showed that he was deeply, deeply disappointed. I'll charge you half the market rates, sir, he urged. The man smiled. It's not a question of money. I will make your shoes shine like silver, the boy pleaded. The man kept refusing and the boy continued to persist till the man agreed. Thank you, the boy said, his face lighting up. But where is your footrest? I haven't got one, Sahib. So, uh, you know, if you've ever seen those street, uh, those, those cobblers sitting on street, so they have a wooden plank kind of a thing which they, which they use as a footrest. So people keep their uh, foot on that wooden plank and then these uh, uh, shoe shine, uh, these, these Polish boys, they polish the shoes. I'll buy one as soon as I have saved some money. The boy lowered himself and slapping one of his knees sharply said, put on your feet, foot hair. Slapping his knees means that he was, he, uh, with a lot of force, he removed the dust that was there on his knees. The man put his foot hesitatingly on it. What happened to your footrest? Broke it? Lost it? Can't afford one, sir. I have a mother and three sisters to support. I worked. Se he worked seriously, spreading polish with his forefinger and making circular strokes with his fingertips. Am I not an expert? The boy asked, looking up at the man's face. Yes, said the man, looking at the boy's innocent face. Wish I had a box and a footrest, but at least I can send my sisters to school. I'm the only one who earns. The other two are too young. What about your father? He left us six months ago, being done with one foot. The boy said, the other foot, please. Have have you tried to save? I have. So now the man is asking this little boy, have you tried to save my, some money? He says, I have. But
but it is impossible with so many people to support. And I don't like to beg or steal. He continued. Sometimes I feel I will go mad. My sisters are growing up. I'll have to fend for them. So imagine a boy of such young age, but with such matured thoughts. You talk like a grown up. The boy looked up with a painful smile. How much would a box and a footrest cost? Eight rupees. You can't save eight rupees? Why do you charge half price? So that I can have more customers. That's why I don't sit on the footpath with the other boys. I go from house to house. The man looked at the boy dolefully, put his hand into his pocket and took and take out the to take out the money. The boy said, can I ask you something? Go ahead, said the man. Can I ask you uh, to lend me eight rupees? I'll return it as soon as I have saved. Don't worry about paying me. No, no. Then I won't. So the man says, don't worry about paying me. So the little boy says, no, no. Then I won't take the money. Just pay me for the shoe shine. Listen to me. Take this. Pay me whenever you like. So this man, he took out eight rupees from his pocket. He and he gave it to the boy. And he said that whenever you have uh, eight rupees saved, you can return the money to me. Thank you, Sahib, said the boy. You've done me a great favor. The man had not seen a warmer smile than the one he saw on the boy's face. The man started going down the stairs, pleased with himself. The boy stood up, holding the money. He had tears in his eyes. At last, I'll be able to buy the footrest, he thought happily. So imagine there are so many young boys in our country or maybe across the globe who at such a tender age, at such a young age, have the responsibility of the entire family. One way maybe you can help these children is, maybe you can try and educate them a little bit. Maybe you can uh, help them read and write the alphabets or maybe their names. And trust me, you'll be doing a great favor to these children. Thank you so much.